<laughs> hey, what is going on, everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, back over on the PS3 to give you all a little bit of a cool update here, walk you through it, and just bring some more functionality to the system here. Now, one of my favorite applications is Multiman or MMCM once you run it once on a custom firmware system with Cobra on it or PS3 Hen. However, it is an application that many people use, know, and love, but it does have a few limitations and quirks on it, and it hasn't had a major update to it in several years. That is until now, but this is not an official update, this is technically a mod, so to speak, and well, let's actually just go over to our computer and look at this here. This here is Multiman Mod, updated for firmware 4.91 and from developer Aldo's Tools, who is the author of many tools that several of you, I'm sure, know and love, including Webman Mod. Now he states here that this here is a mod of Multiman 4.84, which was re-signed for PS3 Hen by Juni and published on Brewology. This version is compatible with custom firmware and PS3 Hen, and it does not show any of the nag screens that were in the latest release. There's a few really nice changes here that Aldo goes into, one of them changing a temporary cache directory, which was conflicting originally with Webman Mod and Prep ISO. For those who do not know, I have shown a method before in which you can load content from an XFAT or NTFS formatted drive using Webman Mod as well as Prep ISO. Unfortunately, a lot of people were running into issues with that with black screens, and it was determined that was because the cache that was being built whenever you use it was conflicting with Multiman, and Multiman kept corrupting it. So if you've had issues with that method, for example, you can use Multiman Mod and that should fix it, which is why this is a pretty cool update. He's also changed the help and support links within Multiman to bring them up to date. Firmware detection has also been updated as well too, and system information will now display the proper firmware. Now he states that prep ntfs.self has been updated, which means that it really has about the same compatibility with NTFS and even XFAT USB drives that you can find in something such as Webman Mod. Although do keep in mind that utilizing a NTFS or even XFAT drive is a little more annoying to do within Multiman once you get that set up with the drivers and such, but as long as you have that set up, you should get some better compatibility with XFAT and NTFS drives. There's also a modified version of the simple file manager mod, which can be found in here. Showtime has been updated to Movian M7 7.0.2. There's been a updated Multiman theme, just slightly updated so that it replaces backgrounds and silences any background music. The name itself has been updated, paths within options default has been updated, and there's also been a few more updates to the license, showtime version, and what's new text files. Now, if you want to download this and install it for the first time or even upgrade, I'll show you how to do that here. Just like any other download of Multiman, you can come over to Brewology, and if you come over here, what I had recommended before was usually if you had a custom firmware, getting the Multiman base version, which this, as I said, was the last one that was updated in 2019. And if you had PS3 Hen, you could use the unofficial Multiman, which has been patched for PS3 Hen compatibility. However, now with Multiman mod, regardless of what you're on, custom firmware or PS3 Hen, you can just download the latest version of Multiman mod, which is working at this point in time up to firmware 4.91. If you're on a lower firmware, you can still utilize this here. But in order to download it, just click on the download link here and save it somewhere you can easily find it. Once you have this downloaded on your computer, you'll need to copy it over to a USB drive which has been formatted to FAT32 since that is what the PS3 will recognize natively. Once you have that formatted, you can go into your USB drive and drag and drop the Multiman mod package file. Once it's been copied over, come back out here, right click, eject a USB drive, and let's take it back over to the console. Once you have your USB drive plugged in, you can check any of the columns such as photo or music and make sure it's showing up. And from here, you now need to go through the install process. If you have PS3 Hen, you will need to enable PS3 Hen if you haven't already. Just like any other time, you tap the Enable Hen option and give it a few seconds to load up and activate. Once it does that, you can go down to the Package Manager, go into Install Package Files, Standard, and then tap the X button on Multiman Mod in order to install it. And if you're running custom firmware, it's the same thing, except you do not have to enable Hen since you're on custom firmware. Now, once this has been installed, we can exit out of there. 
And if we come down to Multiman, you should see that it now shows as Multiman Mod, which means it has been updated or installed for the first time. And in order to test this, well, all you need to do is tap the X button and wait for it to open up. Now you will have to go through these steps right here. And as long as you read them, agree to them, and you want to continue on, go ahead and say yes to them, let it install the initial data, and then wait a little bit longer. And here we go, once it applies the standard theme, you can check this out right here. And as you can see, we now have a bit of a different theme here, a little bit brighter, but as you can see, this here is our Multiman mod. Pretty much the same Multiman we might use, know, and love, but tweaked a bit under the hood to give it a nice coat of paint, literally and figuratively, for 2024 and beyond. However, checking this right off the bat, we can go into system information, and as you can see right here, it does properly show not only MMCM 4.91, but it also shows my own firmware as 4.91, which is accurate, since this is running PS3 HIN with HFW 4.91. So it's nice that this has been updated for the first time since, well, 4.75. Next, if you are wanting to play around with Showtime, I have made a video covering this using the external application when you install it on the XMB, but if you want to mess around with Showtime at all, you can go to the video column and, for example, go into Start Showtime Media Center, and it should bring you here, which should boot you into Movian M7 7.02, so a nice update on here. Now, if you'd like to check out the updated file manager when you're back in here, you can go over to the MMCM column and go into file manager slash MMOS. And once you're in here, you will need to navigate over to the MMCM icon, double click this or double tap the X button, and it should bring this up right here. Now you can scroll down to the mmfile.self, double tap this, and from here it will bring up, well, a old school looking file manager, but a file manager nonetheless. And this here is nice because as stated, this is a modified version of simple file manager mod, which allows you to copy, move, delete, and rename any files and folders stored in the hard drive, as well as FAT32, XFAT, and NTFS drives. It also seems to include EXT2, 3, and 4 support as well, so something pretty nice here overall. However, to get out of here, I'm just going to tap these circle button and say yes to exiting the file manager. Now once you're done with this interface here, you can tap the L1 or R1 buttons to cycle you back to any of these other menus right here, and then just choose which one you prefer. I'm liking this one here, so I'm going to stick with this. Lastly, with a little bit of assistance from this page here using an NTFS external hard drive on the console mods wiki, I am going to be showing you all how you can set up XFAT or NTFS drives on here. Now there's a couple ways you can do it, and one of them is using prep ISO. However, just in case you might have some difficulty, we're actually going to go with the little bit harder approach here, because essentially from what I see, the easy one might work, the more difficult one will have a much higher chance of working, but in terms of difficulty, it's nothing all too bad. What you'll need here is your USB drive. In order to format my drive, I'm just going to right click this, go to format. It's already set up to FAT32 and working on the PS3, so I know it is MBR and not GPT, but you can use NTFS or XFAT. Once you select that, everything else is fine. I'm going to hit quick format, start, OK. And from there, it has been formatted to NTFS, so we can close out of that. Now I'm going to copy over a couple files here just to make sure this is recognized and working. As you can see for this example, I'm using Resident Evil 2, but we can minimize out of this. And for this here, we do need to create a config file. Now what you're going to need to do in order to set this up here is you're going to need to open up Device Manager if you're using Windows, and then within here, open up Disk Drives and find your USB device. Mine is going to be the this USB disk 3.0 USB device. Right click this, click on properties, go over to details, and within the properties section, click on this drop down link here, and we're going to look for parent. And once you hit parent, you're going to see this right here, which is going to be the VID and PID. And we're going to need these two values. From here, we're going to be using Notepad because we need to put both of these values into the Notepad. So first we need to put the VID value, which this is going to be 0x, and then put in the VID, which mine is 13FE, then put in a colon and hit 0x, and then put in the value for the PID. Mine is 6700. Put in another colon followed by one, and then you can save this file. So we can click on file and save as. Navigate to the root of your USB drive. For save type, click on all files, and we're going to call this usb.cfg. 
it needs to be exactly like that, all uppercase. And now click on save. It's worth noting as well too, in the example, it was shown as this, and I'm going to recommend this here, but even though right here, my F and E is capitalized, it would be recommended to keep them lowercase here. So again, your text file should just look like this. You can now click on close, close out of this, close out a device manager. And the good news is now, if we go into our USB drive, we should see the USB configuration file and any other files that we've copied over. So with our USB drive prepared, let's go ahead and come out of here, right click and eject it and try it on Multiman. Now the cool thing is within Multiman, I do have my USB drive set up, but it is not showing right here. And there's a couple ways we'll be able to get this showing. One of them is, well, going back to the file manager right here. What you can do is come in here, and I've already opened it, but you can open up MMCM, and then go ahead and launch that mmfile.self. Now you can see right here, for example, it now shows not only sys, but also NTFS0, or your drive might be XFAT0 when it shows that. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the left here, go into NTFS0, and you can see that I have Resident Evil 2 and my USB config right here. We will need to copy out this USB config, so I'm going to highlight this here, navigate over to the right, go to Sys, and from here we are going to navigate into HDD0. We need to go to the game directory. We're looking for this here, BLES80608. Go into user directory, and right here we're going to be copying this in. So I'm going to go ahead, highlight this here on the left, tap the start button here, and it's going to copy that file over. So as you can see, we now have USB configuration within the Multiman directory. And another nice thing is if we want to set this up as just a old school file copy type thing, we can come back out here. And if there's anything you want to copy over, like for example, if I want to copy out the package file and wrap file from my USB drive, I can now copy them to my internal drive. For example, packages are going to go into the packages directory and the wrap files are going to go into the EX data directory right here. However, to get this USB device to actually show up within Multiman, we can exit out of this completely and say yes to exit out of file manager. And when it brings us back here, go ahead and press the L1 or R1 button to get to your preferred theme. Now with that USB configuration in place, we can go all the way over to the left and switch to Multiman mode. We are in MMCM if you're using this on a Cobra enabled custom firmware or PS3 HIN, but just tap the X button to switch to multi-man mode. And once it ends up relaunching, you can come down here to PFS driver and you'll be able to toggle between FAT32 and NTFS as it shows right here. Just go ahead and tap this to enable this, make sure it scans, give it a few moments. And once that's done, we are going to have to go back to MMOS or the file manager. And once we're in here, well, let me go ahead and close out of this. But if we come over to something such as multi-man, for example, hit the two dots here, hit the two dots yet again. We're kind of just going all the way to the root here. You should see this PVC USB 000 or PVD, whatever it might be called. But if you come in here, as you can see, we do have that set up and it is now showing the USB drive within Multiman itself. I will say this here, in all honesty, this is no disrespect to DNK or Aldo's mod. However, this is not my preferred method of using NTFS or XFAT drives. So if you just saw all this and you think it's a pain, I would recommend using something such as Monoguns to do the same thing or Webman mod with prep ISO. However, if I wanna do any file management for my NTFS drive with Multiman here, I could highlight my Resident Evil 2 package file, for example, tap the circle button on this, tap X to copy this out, go back to the two dots here, two dots yet again, and it would be within dev HDD0 and the packages directory, and inside of here, I can tap the circle button, paste, say yes, and as you can see here, it shouldn't take all too much time, but it's now copying this in real time, you all can see from my NTFS drive to my internal hard drive here using Multiman. So that is nice at least to have that support. Not going into all the details on this one, but I'll go ahead and copy the wrap file as well. So if I want to install this and relicense it, boom, I'll say yes to that. And there we go, it's been copied over. Now I'll go ahead and navigate over to these pages here. As you can see, I didn't put any games or ISOs on this U drive on this USB drive, but according to the wiki article, 
if you are loading up games from a USB drive, which is XFAT or NTFS, they're not going to show in here directly because you can see I'm still able to access it, but they would be showing up within the retro column. So just keep that in mind. Either way, that did take a little longer than I anticipated on here. My apologies. I didn't think I was going to be doing an entire NTFS drive setup on here, but I did. So if you followed along, awesome. But again, in my opinion here, it is nice to have that ability in Multiman, but in terms of execution, you're going to be better off using another application such as Iris Man, Monoguns, or even Webman Mod to do your ISO loading and your package installs from there. However, the big thing is Multiman has gotten at least a pretty reputable unofficial upgrade on here, and many people have reported so far within the past month or two utilizing this that a lot of little issues they had with Multiman were resolved using Multiman Mod. So if you've been running into a few issues with Multiman historically, go ahead and give Multiman Mod mod a try. It's just one package file away, it installs directly over your existing installation, and you should hopefully have a smoother experience such as this right here. Anyways, that is about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too.